Hey everyone, AJ here from Whole Latte Love, and today I'm doing an in-depth comparison of different non-dairy, plant-based alternative milks to see how well they work for steaming and frothing for different espresso drinks and on different types of machines. We'll take a look at how they present and hold up over time as layered latte macchiatos, the ability to steam each to a fine microphone for pouring latte art, and last but certainly not least, a taste comparison. The taste is by far the most important aspect of all coffee drinks, but it's also the most subjective. So I'll wait until later in the video to give my personal thoughts and preferences on that. This video may end up being a bit on the longer side, so I'll put chapter markers in the timeline and also in the description below in case you wanna skip around to different sections at any point. So let's talk about alternative milks. These have become more popular than ever for a variety of reasons. Lots of people are making the switch away from dairy due to dietary, health, or ethical reasons, or simply because they just prefer the taste of these other choices. Whatever the reason, it's nearly impossible to walk into a cafe these days without some sort of dairy-free options, and a lot of people are bringing this trend home into their own kitchens as well. Looking at the ones I've chosen today, we've got almond, coconut, oat, and soy. There are plenty of other types out there like cashew, hemp, rice, pea, flax, hazelnut, macadamia, and more, but these are the four most common and most popular to pair with coffee. Compared to cow's milk, these non-dairy options are generally a bit thinner and harder to froth due to their lack of protein and fat content. Sometimes you'll see the cartons labeled as barista style, barista edition, or barista blend. These are specially formulated with small amounts of stabilizing agents, such as oils or gums, that are designed to assist in creating foam when the milk is steamed. The proteins in these additives help form and stabilize the tiny air bubbles, and the fats contribute to the creaminess and mouthfeel. You don't have to use the barista versions, but I highly recommend using them if you have the option. All of the milks I have here today are the barista series. I chose to use one brand because it was the easiest for me to get my hands on, but there are others out there. In particular, I know Oatly's Barista Edition oat milk is super popular with baristas both at home and in cafes. Before we dive into testing, let's quickly talk about equipment. If you're new to the home espresso world, there are two main types of machines. The first is called Super Automatic, or you may hear of it referred to as bean to cup machines. This kind is all about convenience. Put whole coffee beans in an attached bean hopper, and a built-in grinder will grind them fresh for each cup. Depending on the model, you'll get a variety of pre-programmed drink options that will brew automatically at the touch of a button. Most machines include a milk system, whether it's a manual frothing wand, a tube leading to a separate container, or a detachable milk carafe that can be stashed away in your fridge between uses. Super autos don't require a deep knowledge of espresso and are as easy as it gets to make a great cup of coffee, latte, cappuccino, or more at the touch of a button and in the comfort of your own home. The other main category of espresso machine is referred to as semi-automatic. These require a separate grinder and a little more practice, but what they lack in convenience compared to the super autos, they make up for in control and quality. You have a nearly unlimited ability to tweak experiment, and dial in the best possible espresso shot for your taste preferences. They're often easier to customize, service, and upgrade individual components so your coffee bar can grow as your espresso knowledge and tastes do. I ran tests of all of my milks in both types of machines, and we'll go over the results of each, starting with Super Automatic. For this, I used the new Gaja Magenta Prestige which features a detachable milk carafe and color display to customize drink volumes, temperatures, and strength. Using each different milk, I brewed a latte macchiato, deciding that that would be the best to represent several qualities of the milk. To demonstrate this and serve as a point of reference for the test, here's a latte macchiato made with regular whole milk. When brewed on a super auto, the machine dispenses an airy frothed milk first then a built-in delay allows the foam to settle and separate slightly from the more dense hot milk that sinks to the bottom, before adding an espresso shot, which will settle right in the middle of the drink. The result is a beautiful three-layered presentation with a unique taste profile that evolves as the drink progresses. A really good latte macchiato starts featuring an espresso-forward taste with a little added texture from the foam on top and a slight sweetness from the milk that is mixed into that middle layer. 
As you drink it, the espresso to milk balance flips to give you a more mild, creamier finish. In case you want to sip and enjoy the drink over a longer period of time, here's how it holds up with whole milk after one minute, three minutes, and five minutes. As time goes on, you see a little more separating between the layers, a little more mixing in the bottom, and the foam up top holds its volume well. Next up was the almond milk. The foam dispensed looking similar to the whole milk. When the espresso was added, the middle layer was darker and more concentrated, while the bottom layer extended higher up into the glass than in the first example. Again, here's what it looked like after one minute, three minutes, and five minutes. Coconut milk took this change even farther. The espresso formed a very thin, dark layer in the middle, while the hot milk filled up even more of the glass down below. It also resulted in the smallest cap of foam on top. The resulting drink tasted much stronger up front, then tapered off to a mild, thinner finish. Personally, I prefer the coffee to naturally mix in with the milk a little more than it did here. Things changed once we got to the oat milk. Everything looked fine when the milk was dispensing, but adding the shot caused noticeable curdling and didn't look very appetizing. This can happen with plant-based milks for a number of reasons. It could be old or spoiled, too hot, or a reaction with overly acidic coffee. I double-checked the carton and it was still a year from expiration, so that wasn't it. I shook it extra well just in case I forgot to do this the first time, refilled the carafe, and prepared another one. Same thing. Next, I lowered the temperature of my espresso from high heat to low heat to see if that would help. Nope. This led me to believe that either my milk was steaming too hot out of the carafe or it was a reaction with the coffee I was using. Since I didn't want to change any variables for the rest of the experiment, I decided to move on without swapping out the contents of the hopper for different beans. Last up was soy, which appearance-wise was probably the closest to the cow's milk, forming nice, distinct layers that gradually settled over time. While I don't personally love the taste of soy milk, it did perform how I like in this drink, starting out as espresso forward with a little hint of milk and ending as milk forward with a hint of espresso. Here's what all five samples looked like side by side from start to finish and then sitting for five minutes, sped up 20 times. Switching over to a semi-automatic machine, I used a quick mill Arnos with walnut accents to make a latte using each milk. The taste profile of a standard latte is different than that of the latte macchiatos we made on the Super Auto. For the latte, we start with espresso and mix in steamed milk to create a more uniform taste throughout. There's a finer foam which creates a thin layer up top and a creamier texture in the body of the cup. Now, I'm not a professional barista, but I do like manual frothing, and I wanted to see how well I could texture each kind of milk to create microfoam capable of pouring latte art. If you're new to this technique, I'll put a link down in the description to a video I made for beginners on how to get started doing that. So again, I started with whole milk because that's what I'm most familiar with, and it could serve as a good reference point for the rest of the options. For all of these, I'm making an 8-ounce latte with a double shot of espresso and about 6 ounces of milk, steamed to around 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius. The whole milk steamed that nice latex paint texture we aim for, poured well, and was able to hold the fine details of a Rosetta design. Moving on to the almond milk, I steamed with the same technique that I do with whole milk, but it resulted in much larger bubbles in the pitcher. I gave a few extra taps on the counter to pop as many as possible and poured my design. Or at least tried to pour my design, which looked more like a pumpkin with a tail than a Rosetta. I tried again, this time aerating a little less and mixing it in longer, but didn't have much better luck with that pour. On my third take, I really focused on introducing much less air early on, only a couple rips from the wand before burying it and mixing it in as much as possible before reaching my desired temperature. Although my resulting milk was much thinner, even after a bunch of taps and swirls, I still had a lot of those big bubbles in the pitcher. I did get a little more detail in the design, even though it was thinner than I'd normally like, but those large bubbles were still present in the finished drink. After looking at the carton, I felt a little better seeing that their product photo also had some bigger bubbles compared to their other packaging, so maybe it wasn't just me. 
I'll need to practice a bit more with almond milk to get my texture down, but my main takeaways were to incorporate less air, stretch it for a shorter amount of time, and mix it in as much as possible with a strong roll or whirlpool without overheating it. Next up was coconut milk, which gave me less of those big bubbles and allowed me to get a more presentable design. It was a little tricky to hit the sweet spot of texture and I ended up making it a little too thick, but it was still pretty forgiving and poured much better than the almond milk. After that was the oat milk, which I think of all of the options felt the most like cow's milk when steaming and pouring. This is probably why oat has become the most popular alternative milk for espresso drinks in recent years. Now remember that the oat was the one that curdled with the super automatic machine, but I didn't have that issue here at all, which leads me to believe that it probably wasn't the result of the acidity in the coffee beans I was using, and likely that the milk was just heating too much in the earlier tests. Last up was the soy milk, which I found thickened up a bit while steaming, similar to the coconut milk. It was still easy enough to pour some sort of design, but left me with a little more foam sitting on top of the drink. Depending on your preferences, this may be a good or a bad thing, but you could probably get better results by incorporating a little less air at the start of the steaming process. Finally, let's talk about the taste of each of these. Just a reminder that these are my personal takeaways based on my own preferences. Also note that different beans and brew recipes will result in different flavor profiles, so this is strictly based on my tests here today. As a reference point, for me, whole milk generally works well because it allows the espresso flavor to cut through without altering it too much. It can, however, add a very subtle sweet flavor, which counteracts any bitterness that may be present in the coffee, and provides a creamy and full mouthfeel. The almond milk, even though it was the hardest to steam and pour art with, was the best tasting in my opinion. It was sweeter than the cow's milk, but not overpoweringly so. There was a subtle nutty flavor which complements the honey and almond notes of the coffee I was using. I did find that if I overheated it, it quickly became bitter, so I'd play it safe by remaining on the lower end of the heating range, maybe shooting for around 130 to 135 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 54 to 57 degrees Celsius. While I won't go too deep into it in this video, almond growing and specifically almond milk production has raised sustainability concerns, particularly relating to water consumption. So this may be something to keep in mind if you're considering this option, especially from an environmental impact standpoint. Moving on to the coconut milk, this one kind of surprised me. I don't know if I've ever actually had a coconut milk latte, and I'm not generally a huge fan of coconut as a flavor, but in my tests it didn't taste overly coconutty. It actually didn't taste like much of anything, providing only a little sweetness and a very light body, probably the thinnest of the group. The oat milk added the strongest and most distinct flavor to the drink. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, providing that you like the taste of oats or oat milk normally, or if you're just trying to tame the espresso a bit. For me, I felt like it distracted from the flavors of the coffee a little more than I would have liked. It also had a gritty, almost chalky texture to it that wasn't present in any of the other milks. I have had oat milk lattes that I really liked before, so I may get better results with a different brand or by tweaking my recipe a little. Last up was the soy, which similar to the coconut milk, didn't impart that much flavor on the overall drink. It was the least sweet of the bunch and had a slightly earthy, beany taste, but I felt like I was drinking more of a watered down espresso than a full creamy latte. Taste wise, probably my least favorite. So there you have it, a deep look at the ins and outs of several of the most popular plant-based milks for espresso beverages. If your favorite wasn't mentioned, you have tips for steaming alternative milks, or you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll personally get back to you. And if you like this kind of content, be sure to like, subscribe, and come back to the channel for more of the best on everything coffee, brought to you by Whole Latte Love.